Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we are going to learn how to read a chest x-ray. So first, I'm going to give you a little bit of introduction. Then we'll do interpretation of chest x-ray. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to give you some examples of relevant pathologies in trauma cases. So it may help you understand better. Okay, so first of all, chest x-ray is an investigation that can be used to check conditions of heart, lungs, blood vessels, or bones like rib or spine fractures. It produces a black and white image that shows the organs in your chest. So structures that block radiations like bones and heart appear white or radiopaque. While the areas where air is present like lungs block very little or no radiations at all. So they appear darker or radiolucent. Now moving on to the interpretation. There is no perfect way of reading a chest x-ray. But it's always easier and simpler to adopt a structured approach which includes first confirming the details, then assessing the image quality, and lastly following the ABC checklist. So the first step is to confirm the details, for which you need to ask the patient's full name and date of birth so you don't mix up x-rays. And then confirm the date and time the x-ray was taken so you know how old or how recent the x-ray is. And also ask if there is any previous imaging available, which will be helpful for comparison. Next step is to assess the image quality. Here you need to consider four things, which are rotation, inspiration, projection, and exposure. A mnemonic you may find useful here is RIPE. In rotation, we are making sure that the patient is standing straight and he is not rotated to either left or right because rotation can produce errors on the image. So how do we make sure of that? We check the distance between his spinous processes and the clavicles of each side. If this distance is increased on one side, then the patient is rotated to that side. Next is to assess inspiration. While taking chest x-ray, the radiographer asks the patient to breathe in and hold their breath. This is done to examine the patient on full inspiration to get a better overall image. So in order to consider a chest x-ray adequate in terms of inspiration, you should be able to see 8 to 10 posterior ribs. Then we have projection. The standard projection is PA view where the patient is standing up with the x-ray beam passing through the patient from posterior to anterior. But when the patient is not well enough to stand, the x-ray can be taken in AP view where the x-ray beam passes from anterior to posterior of the patient. X-rays are often labeled as either PA or AP but if you are not sure then you should look at the medial edges of a scapula. If they are projected over each lung, it is AP view and if they are not projected, then it is PA. Heart size is also magnified in AP view, so you should never consider the heart to be enlarged if the projection used is AP. Last is exposure. Ideally, you should be able to see heart, blood vessels, bones and vertebrae should be visible behind the heart. But if the film is underexposed, you will not be able to see these structures. And if it is overexposed, the details of bone structures will be lost. So to reach to a diagnosis, you should be able to differentiate between an abnormality and a technical error. Now after you have assessed image quality, next step is to assess individual structures, which can be carried out in a structural way by following the A to H checklist. Where A is for airway, which is trachea, it is normally located centrally, so look for evidence of deviation and any kind of masses in this area. If it's normal, then move on to B, which is for bones. Scan the bones for fractures, lesions and osteoporosis by checking the bone's thickness and density. Next is C, which is for cardiac silhouette. First evaluate the heart size. It should be less than 50% of chest diameter on PA films and less than 60% on AP films. Then check for heart shape, calcifications and prosthetic valves. Then come to D which is diaphragm. The right hemidiaphragm is 2 to 3 cm higher than the left diaphragm due to the liver. So check the position of diaphragm. Then the shape. It is normally dome shape but it can get flattened in some pathologies. And then look below the diaphragm for free gas. Next is E for effusion. Always check the costophrenic angles for sharpness because blunted angles may indicate small effusions. Then moving on to F which is for fields, fluid and foreign body. In the lung field check the lung volume and look for pneumothoraces, infiltrates, masses and consolidation. 
Then presence of fluid can be indicated by obliterated costophrenic angles, meniscus sign and a wider lung field. And then check the position of foreign bodies like endotracheal tube, nasogastric tube, pacemaker leads, central venous lines, etc. Next is G for great vessel and gastric air bubble. So check the aortic size and shape, aortic knuckle should be clearly seen and gastric air bubble should also be seen clearly. Lastly, H is for hyla. Evaluate each hilum for lymphadenopathy, calcifications and masses. Alright, so we're done with the first two parts, introduction and interpretation. Now let's move on to the third part, which was examples of lung pathologies in chest trauma. So here's your first scenario. Read it thoroughly, then try to apply the information on the radiograph and confirm your findings. But do not jump to conclusions, follow the A to H order and then come up with the diagnosis. I hope you paused the video and read it. So for the diagnosis, the scenario has given us enough details to work with. Chest trauma with tachycardia, hypotension, tachypnea with reduced breath sounds and hyperresonant percussion note, which is heard when there is too much air. All these signs give us a picture of tension pneumothorax. And why tension? Because we can tell that not only the respiratory system but the cardiovascular system is also compromised here. And this is why x-ray is absolutely contraindicated when you're suspecting tension pneumothorax because it can delay the treatment. So immediately perform needle decompression and stabilize the patient. Now coming to the radiograph, starting from A, trachea is shifted to the right, then bones, there are fractures of 3rd, 4th and 5th ribs posteriorly and fracture of middle 3rd of left clavicle. Heart is shifted to the right as well, diaphragm looks normal, no effusion is seen, left lung looks collapsed as you can see the margin. Aorta is also shifted to the right, gastric bubble is not visible and hyla cannot be located so cannot comment on it. This is the second case. Pause it and read it. So patient has suffered from a stab wound and there is a dull percussion note. So we can suspect that there is blood in the chest cavity which is hemothorax. You already know the scheme so I am just going to point out the findings on chest x-ray. On the left side the diaphragm and heart's border cannot be clearly identified. There is blunting of left costrophrenic angle. The area appears whiter and we can see a meniscus sign. These three signs indicate presence of fluid which could be either pleural effusion or hemothorax. But we know from the history that it is hemothorax. Management is by chest tube insertion which can also be diagnostic without the x-ray. Here's the third and final case. Patient has chest pain, difficulty breathing, contusion on right chest, crepitation and asymmetrical chest movement of right chest. All these signs are typical features of rib fracture or flail chest. So on the radiograph we see multiple rib fractures. There is also pulmonary contusion and subcutaneous emphysema, which is trapped here under the skin. Standard management is pain control, oxygen administration and pulmonary physiotherapy. I hope you understood well. This was everything about today's video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.